children and naming it and claiming it as well because I've got two kids who are 18 and 20 and they were really great kids. However, there was a lot of language with teenage boys early on about being courageous, but really it was about being stupid and taking <laughs> dares. <laughs> and yes. fortunately, my kids, yes, and fortunately my kids didn't fall into that courage camp. They would they were able to fall into real courage and say, "No, that's stupid." <laughs> Whether it was, you know, physical or just behaviors and patterns of thinking that didn't make sense. Courage is such a small thing sometimes to be able to call it out and say, I don't feel comfortable doing that. No, thank you. Exactly. Exactly that simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Now, here's what I'm curious about. Do some women deny having courage because they think it is that masculine, overly aggressive rawr, stuff. So they say, nope, that's not me. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's part of my challenge of my work of being a trailblazer is that all of those different opinions are placed on us. A, a word that I'm talking about means heart and spirit. If you look in the dictionary, it's about fear. It's about a persevering, you know, so that's not my, once again, yeah. not my focus. So yes, you know, our culture has basically said that, you know, women cannot be courageous because we're, we're women or that, uh, you know, you have to do something that's sensational or amazing or daring or whatever. And that's once again, not what I'm talking about. Right. Because I'm very big into women are not all women, but feminine energy. Men can embody feminine energy. Women can embody masculine energy. So just for a clarification, the feminine energy I feel is very nurturing. And I feel like there is nothing more courageous than to nurture with complete love and devotion. And again, it's not martyring and it's not that men can't do it and it's not that all women do it, but it's that courageous sense of nurturing with complete heart and spirit. And that's a very overlooked role. It's a very overlooked energy in our society. In ways it's getting better, but women are not honored for that courage in truly mothering, whether they're mothering a child or an animal or a business or a partner or a friend <laughs> or themselves. It's that courageous heart and spirit that I feel flows through the divine feminine, naturally. Yeah. And they, it gets discounted because it's, it's not that, you know, out of the 11% of women that I interviewed, and I've been curious, and maybe you can help me with this, I've been curious um, about 25% of that 11% identify themselves as a tomboy. And I oh. thought the other day, I thought, I wonder if that term is, is used anymore because now we have title nine or five, whatever it is. Now we have different things that allow girls to play and, and to, um, I was just on the cutting edge of that, girls to play. Um, but um, I know I was quote a tomboy. So I looked up, well, where did it come? We don't need to get into that where the, where the term tomboy came into. But um, I thought, I wonder if that term is still labeled. You know, she's a tomboy. Interesting. I'm not exactly sure, but now I'm very curious about that because that term is in my realm of consciousness, but I have not heard it used by a lot of people. Yeah, and the, and the women um, that used it, that, that said in the book, and it could have been just 20%, they, they today are older, you know, and they were older then, but that was 20, you know, 22 years ago. So they're probably one of them I'm thinking of, and she is definitely courageous. Uh, she's probably 80 and suffers actually from MS. Um, so, yeah. That's really interesting. And that does show the cultural tie between feminine, masculine, possibly the physical bravery. Yeah, there you go. Putting those two together, of commingling those together. Yes. Mm -hmm. As compared to my work focuses on the spiritual courage, the personal courage, the leadership courage. Right. Um, so, 
So talk a little bit more about leadership courage. Um, I'm assuming you mean in a leadership role in work, but that could also yes. apply to family, interpersonal relationships, anything like that. Well, in work, what's been interesting to me, there's been two different situations where I'm just, my mouth is just kind of like, oh, uh, one, uh, this group of executives were talking, if I, when I tell a story, I just tell the truth about the story. If it's a woman, if it's a woman, it's, if it's two men, it's two men, it's just the story. Right. So one was about, they were just going on and on about this, this executive. And I interrupted, I said, you guys, who are you talking about? I said, oh, their boss, she was blah, blah, blah. And, and they went, I said, so why? What, what marked her leadership skills? And then another one was about a man. The bottom line on both of those, Laura, was yeah. they never talked about, well, my God, she was so smart. She knew you know, this and she knew that, or he was so smart. It was always, you know, she always knew what the name of my dog. He always knew, you know, that I was having problems with my grandmother. It was always the heartfelt centeredness of being present about who the other person really was. Yes. Never that they were the smartest engineer I had ever met in my life. And they went to MIT and <laughs> Yes. Yes. I just recently gave a talk to a group of high schoolers about the difference between leadership and managing. And based on what you've said, I feel like managers maybe don't lead with courage, but a true leader has that heart, has that spirit, knows the name of your dog, knows what you're going through. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, a manager... Generally, I, I, I do work above that, so I, I'm not a sure, but they generally, um, a lot of times haven't been um, really trained to be in that role. They don't really have the, the leadership skills and um, don't, you know, just are, are not as aware of where someone above them has learned, learned some of the hard knocks as to what it is, what I call to leave a noble legacy that you want to make courage your daily legacy. That is the motto in my business. Make courage your daily legacy. It's not yeah. about at the end of your life when somebody says, she did this, she did that, she did this, she did that. Mm -hmm. And I like the tie-in between that. You've mentioned several times being grateful for the small things and making courage your daily legacy because that makes it so doable. It's not this huge mountain that somebody has to climb and become this courageous person. It's what can I do, maybe not even today or this afternoon, but what can I do right now in the next interaction that I have with somebody else? And tying that into your 11th hour hospice work, which I love, I just, I can't say enough about hospice. Tying that in, it, it is the sum total of our days. It's the sum total of our hours and our minutes and the behaviors and the attitudes and what we have done every second along the way that matter. Yeah, it's those small collective steps of courage that mount up and sometimes we slide back you know, uh, and learning things, but it is a small collective. It's not, generally, it's not the big, woo -hoo, you know, whatever um, that it is. And that's where you get to have that, like what you have, that beautiful smile each day, or you're the lady that you're, you know, yeah. that gets up and does, you know, that has that smile on their face and gratitude and, and joy. So... Yes. So for the listeners, do you have any examples of some small steps that they can take today to be courageous in their next interaction, in their next thought? Do you have any ideas for them? Yes. And I, I would like to offer it as a challenge. Good. <laughs> and the challenge is, can you just start saying the word? And can you say the word as it applies to, let's say, standing in one's convictions standing in one's voice, in other words, not swallowing their voice, uh, the willingness of their courage to take a risk. Um, I just had a very difficult uh, conversation, and I'm a certified coach, and so is he, and a uh, conversation with someone last night, and I have been losing sleep every, for three nights over that silly conversation. I'm confessing. I'm human, too. Right. And I've had applied tools, uh, coaching, linguistic tools that I use in my work. And so I was able to set up a foundation of receptivity of, for him to listen in a different, uh, different light. 
so we were end up ended up being able to share but to look at to be able to observe let's say in your children okay honey why are you scared this is this because a lot of people so i'm talking about certification a lot of people do really believe in their fears they have really set up fears that are true to them you know and and if you told them that's not true that's not really it they, they, for you and you can't discount them i mean it really is true for them so to start using the word and Laura, i mean that is if there's one magic wand and i can pull out my magic wand there's one magic wand that's that would be it just start saying it and recognize the 12 behaviors of courage and those i just mentioned yeah. and those 12 behaviors of courage found on the source wheel are actually on my website too oh so good you can distinguish the linguistics of those so ah this is sandra this is where i need like last night i need to have the courage to speak up and get this with ho this holding off my chest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, before we move any further, will you tell people your web address so they can go check out some of the information? Yes, and so I appreciated that you said my name right because only 1% of people do. <laughs> <laughs> I know that may sound like an exaggeration, but it's not. No, I, I can relate to that. People, <laughs> people mispronounce mine all the time, too. <laughs> so my website is just Sandra Walston, W-A-L-S-T-O-N.com. Perfect. And I will also put that on the show page um, for people who are Thank interested you. in getting in touch with you. And as usual, I say this to my listeners often, if you know that there's a guest and you can't remember their name because you're driving, reach out to me. I'm always happy to connect you as well. So you know how to find me, listeners, Laura at laurachetel.com. And it's funny that you were mentioning people mis mispronouncing your name because, yes, I'm Laura, L-O-R-A, and I cannot tell you how many people are confused by that. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've had people okay. be like, Low Ray? Low oh. Ra it's just, just Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? <laughs> exactly. So I hear you. Um, I like how you talk about the linguistics of it. I am a huge believer myself in the power of I am and just declaring mm -hmm. yourself as I am courageous. I am courageous and it shifts everything. And also you talked about the fears and as a hypnotherapist, I often work with my clients on distinguishing between fears and phobias because a fear is something that you have experienced and you have a reason to be fearful of it. For example, if the dog named Fido has snapped at you and Fido has bit your fingers, it's reasonable and rational to have a fear of feeding Fido because Fido has bitten you before. That's a, a normal, natural, true story. It's a fear. It's a phobia to be afraid of something and to have no experience with it. And sometimes just having the linguistics again around that helps release that idea that something is scary to somebody. So the fear and the phobia around courage, most people, I think if they wrap their head around that and can declare, I am courageous and wow, I have a phobia over this instead of it's maybe not really a fear because I really haven't had experience with it, but it's a phobia and it's probably irrational. And once I declare I have courage, then that phobia loses its power because of that conscious cognitive understanding of who I am. I am courageous and it's just a phobia. I have no experience. Let it go. It's all okay. Exactly. And then I, I love a quote that I have found. I cannot take, um, cause what you're talking about is if, uh, Fido <laughs> bites me, you know, and I have a fear. That's physical courage. That's a really, I've really experienced that. That mm -hmm. is real. The acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. There's no true threat of immediate physical danger, no threat of a loss of someone or something dear to us. Actually, nothing there at all. Fear is an illusion. So mm -hmm. I tell people that, you know, if if you have a, a saber-toothed tiger chasing you in the jungle, you better be, you better be, you 
you're going to be really afraid. Or let's say you're in a parking lot and you sense in a dark parking lot at night and you sense someone is maybe following you. You know, there's, there's a, you don't have to have 